did everything. All right, guys, we are back in free code camp in responsive web de design, starting our basic CSS. So CSS, for those of you who don't know, stands for cascading style sheets. What that basically means is it's how we make things look good. It's how we set the background color. It's how we choose uh, this, what font to use. It's how we set this button to, to green, how when we hover over it, it uh, does certain things. So uh, this color, fonts, positioning, spacing, sizing, decorations, transitions, it's a crucial part of the web and it's used in everything that you can imagine. Um, you use this as style tags, you'll see more of this, but typically how you usually do your styling is an external style sheets where you basically link it up with a link tag. We'll go into that more, but you can also do what they're talking about here, which is inline styling. And uh, CSS refers to the uh, selector target element, the way HTML and your web page works. It works in the DOM, which is a document object model. The document is your HTML document. That's really all you really need to know from this section. More than anything else, let's just jump right in and see what we're trying to do. So you'll see we have our cat photo app. Uh, let's see, what do they want us to do? So when we run this, let's run the test, see what we have here. So our cat photo app, which we designed in the HTML section, uh, we want our H2 element to be red. Now we can do that by going into our H2 element and do what's called inline styling, which is right here. So we do style is equal to, and then we're going to put the attribute, in this case it's color, and then the value, which will be red. So we want to put color is red. Now when we run this, we have now just styled our cat photo app right here, and we're, it's now taken effect. That's basically inline styling. Now what we want to do here is it says we want to remove our inline styling and instead we want to create a style element so instead of putting it in there we can also do the style tags or style elements and we can put various this is would be similar to how we would do a cascading style sheet and in here we're going to use our h2 element target our h2 element and notice how we put the brackets in between here this is basically where we're going to put our attributes and their values for our h2 and then um, we want to make our element here our color of our element to blue like so very nice now as we continue on you'll see our h2 element should be red okay let's go ahead and change that to red uh, oh we want to give it a class okay so instead of targeting it like this, we can now assign classes. This is pretty simple. Classes are basically, um, think of them almost as styling variables that you can use over and over and over again. So in this case, we have class, and we're gonna set this equal to red dash text. We haven't defined this yet, we're gonna define it now. Now when defining a class, use a dot in front of the name to basically tell your style sheet, hey, this is a class and we're gonna call it red text. And in here, we're gonna set our attribute, our color attribute, and we're gonna set it to red. This, we're gonna set the, basically our CSS class is the red text. We're assigning the class here, and it's gonna inherit its attributes. Uh, we're not gonna need to do inline styling or anything else. The reason we do it like this is if we wanted to add additional stylings, it would be relatively easy and we wouldn't have to keep on doing a huge long chain of styling in our HTML. Now, uh, should be red, should have class, the per first paragraph element, and as I was saying earlier, we can actually reuse this class. So we don't have to retype out our style tag. Instead, we're gonna type out class and we're just gonna assign red dash text. Um, first element should be red, second element, the second and third should not. All right, cool. So when we run it, you'll see now this is red as well. We didn't have to do any additional styling. All we had to do was assign the class that we generated, that we created, excuse me. Now, another aspect we've been messing around with color is font-size. Now, between the style tags, we want to give the P elements the font size of 16. Now, how we do this is we can go ahead and just target the P element like before, and we want to do font-size, 
and we want to do this 16 px. So you'll see that the font size changed ever so slightly, and we want to do we want to use a certain type of font. The way that we assign font families or font types is font dash family, and we want to pass in a mono space like so. This here is going to change what type of font is outputting. You'll see that it changes into this other this other type right here. Now, not your browser will come with some predefined fonts, but not everything will. Uh, you know, there's thousands of custom fonts out there. Lobster is a popular one. To import a font, you can do it with these link tags in our HTML document. Is one way of doing it. So let's go ahead and do that. So link. This is how you import a style sheet or a font. Notice how there's no closing tag, and we're just going to pass an href to it. And uh, let's actually just copy this over so I don't mistype anything, and I'll explain it. So we have our link tag. Let's get a little bit of space in here. Basically, this is where the font is located. This is just telling the browser that it's a style sheet, and this is just saying that the type is text and CSS. Now, if we wanted to assign that uh, font family, all we would have to do is pass in lobster like so. So run our run our thing here and you'll notice how now we have oh excuse me I signed it to the wrong class so what we wanted to do was in our red our red uh, text here we also want to assign the font dash family to lobster and uh, the P should still use the font model space so now you'll see our cat photo app will uh, change its font h2 css selector oh excuse me they wanted us to sign it to the h2 directly and not through the class that we created kind of silly but we can do it uh, so font dash family and then we'll do lobster so this is going to affect all h2s and not just the classes that we did before so still the same effect since we only have one h2 element at this time Now, as we move forward, you can see that there's multiple fonts. And you're saying, Dylan, why would we have multiple fonts? Basically, not all browsers have the same fonts. So this comma says, if there is no Helvetica, go ahead and use sans serif. Now, if there's neither of those, your browser will use some sort of default font. Same thing goes for Lobster. So we want our H2 element to use Lobster, that test pass should degrade the font when lobster is not available. So when lobster is not available, we want it to use monospace. Cool. So what's going to happen now is this link tag that we put up here, we're going to comment that out. Now, a quick, quick little side note, uh, you can uh, it's a comment things out is the caret exclamation dash dash then dash dash arrow now if you want a little quick tip to kind of save yourself a ton of time hold down control and hit slash and it will do it automatically as well as make it so that you can uh, comment in and comment out very relatively easy so now that we comment this out it's going to default to the monospace so let's go ahead and run this and you'll see right here it now has defaulted to our monospace because we got rid of our lobster library thus our font family our first choice fails So now we're going to assign additional styling here, and we're going to assign it on the image level, like so. And the, your image should be 100 pixels wide, so we can do that with width, the width attribute. And we're just going to assign 100 px. Let me see if I zoom in a little bit, if that will help. Yeah. Oh, that's better. We'll do it like so. So we're going to assign the width attribute, and it's going to be 100 pixels wide uh, oh excuse me uh, instead of image we actually wanted to uh, create a class here and we're gonna do smaller dash image remember classes start with the dot and we're gonna jump to our image here which is searching 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 where is image 
Why can't I see the image? Here we are. Uh, so we're going to assign the class equal to a smaller image. Now notice that we don't actually put the dot in here. This is not something you do. You only uh, do the dot in your style sheets, in your style tags. Nice. So we still wanted to have the smaller image. Cool. Uh, your image should also have the, the class thick green border. So let's go ahead and define another class. And you'll notice now that we can actually add more than one class when using classes in our style sheet. So let's go define that. So this is uh, the class name is thick dash green dash border. And within here, what we want it to do is we want to give it a uh, a border. Let's see, what, I forget the it's border dash color. Okay, so we're gonna do it as separate parameters. Set separate attributes. So we're gonna give it a uh, color green. We're gonna give it a width of 10 pixels, I believe, right? And then a border of style. So this is border dash width of 10 pixels. And then we're gonna give it a border dash style of solid. So what this basically means is we're gonna add a border around our, our image, which I forgot to add here. So let's jump into our image class here. And we're gonna add the image class thick dash green dash border so when we run this you'll see that now we have a border so this border its color is green its width is 10 pixels and its type is solid now let's continue on your image element should have the class of thick green border your image should have a border of 10 px or border radius, excuse me. So border radius is basically how much the image curves in around the corners. That's all that really is going on here. So we don't we don't really like that there's rigid corners like so. What we want to do instead is we want to assign border dash radius, and we want to make it slightly curved because we, you know, for style purposes, we think this looks better right now. And you'll see when we run it, our corners curve ever so slightly. Now, say we wanted to make it circular, we could do that as well. But instead of 10 pixels, the way that we would do that is by assigning border radius of 50%, and this will make any square into a circle. And you'll see like so, you have your perfect circle around your picture, which is really helpful so that you don't have to customize all your pictures. You can just assign the CSS and have your pictures as circles, even though they're squares. You don't have to go in and edit them. Now, what we want to do now is we want to target all our divs. So in here, we want to give our, we want to say, look, for our divs, our containers, we want to have a background color equal to one of the built-in colors that are there. So silver, for instance. So when we run this, we'll have a nice silver background like so. Um, we need to go ahead and give your div element the class. Silver. So where's our div element? So I don't see a, uh, it looks like they didn't uh, assign us a div here, but oh, they did. Your div element should have the class silver background. So this is my fault. I forgot to create the class, I misread that. So uh, let's go ahead and just add this in real quick. And we already know everything, how to do this. So a class, swap out our, our term here. It will have the same CSS effect, but we need to make sure we follow the instructions. So there is our silver background like so. Pretty cool. So we've been working with classes. Now let's talk about working with IDs. Classes, you can reuse things again and again and again. With IDs, you really only want to use it once. That identifies that person. Like my name is Dylan Christopher Israel. There may be a ton of people, or my social security is a better example. Um, there may be people with the same first name as Dylan. In theory, there should not be people with the same social security number. Uh, and that's kind of how you should think of, uh, they both do the same thing, except IDs are singular, classes are multiple. You can use them again and again. So we want to give the our form element an ID, because we only have one form, right? So let's go ahead and find our form which is right here. And we want to give it an ID of cat photo form. All we have to do is pass in the ID attribute. Uh, 
and run our test. So we assign the ID. We haven't done anything with it yet. That's just how we assign it. Now, um, we want to go ahead and target that. So the, the main difference in your styling to kind of, other than the fact that you use one, but you have to let the style sheet know one's a class, one's a element, and one is an ID. And the way that you tell it's ID is with this hashtag, or if you're an old SOB like myself, the pound sign, uh, but I t got told in other videos to stop using it. It dated myself. So we are doing the hashtag because that's what the young kids be saying. Uh, background dash color. And we're going to assign green to this as well. And I, we should be good now. So now what's going to happen is the form element should have background dash color of green. Of course, make sure that you pass in the uh, the name of your ID, which is cat photo form. Whoopsies, and continue on like so. So you'll see down here, this is now green. Now we can also do some padding. So this is all very close together on the edges, not something you want. Now you'll see our red box has padding, and what we want to do is now assign it to our green, the green box padding right here is 10 pixels. Instead, what we want to do is give it 20 pixels. So look look closely at our, our our box here and you'll see now oh, we got a new app. Let's actually let's reset this one so that we can see it. We're still working with the the old info. So you'll see right here, we have a little bit of padding on here, 10 pixels. Uh, let's actually take out and apply zero pixels so that we can really see how much padding is getting added. So you'll see right here, this left and right, or the top, bottom, left and right is uh, not adding any padding. So what we're actually gonna do is add 20 pixels of padding all around it. That means top, bottom, left or right. You're not gonna see it on the left and right side because the width is greater than that padding right now. But you'll see now this expands, uh, expands, um, it expands based off of our padding above it. Now there's padding, which is um, the space of the element with itself. And then there's margin, which is the space between multiple elements. So margin is another thing that you can do. You'll see right now, this is basically the space in here. And what we're gonna do to kind of showcase this is we're gonna go back to zero PX. And so you'll see that the margin around it, around the the item on its side is zero pixels. So why did it, so what we want to do is assign a margin of 20 pixels and you'll see it expands and so the items around it expanded alongside of it like so. <coughs> Excuse me. So an element's margin controls the amount of space between the border and its surrounding elements. Now you can also make this in the negative direction. So let's go ahead and do minus 15 PX for our margin. And you'll see that we got rid of what was around it because without that border, we basically brought it in. It doesn't exist and everything moves accordingly. Now what we were doing covered again, left, right, top and bottom. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna only target certain aspects of it. So we're gonna go piece by piece, padding dash top. You can do padding dash top is 40 PX. Let's run it so you can see. You'll see right here, we added additional padding to our element here. So this is 40 pixels of padding right here. And then we go on and we wanna give it 20 pixels of padding to the right. We can do that by just doing padding dash right. And we'll do 20 PX. And we'll go ahead and run that like so. So this is pushing it a little bit and we want to do it to the bottom so it kind of evens out. So padding dash bottom, that's 20 PX. We're gonna run like so, a little bit better. Still off center. Let's go ahead and do um, padding dash left. And we'll do another 20 PX as well. And you'll see we finally move, wait, oh, excuse me, 40 PX kind of move back to into space so that we match with this right here. But you can see how the padding, depending on if you're doing the top left, bottom right, will affect the element in various directions. You can do the same thing with margin. So we, we showcase how doing padding, it's the exact same concept with margin. We do margin dash top. And we're, we're gonna scoot through this since we kind of demonstrated a similar thing in padding. 
of 40 pixels. We can do the same thing with the right element. So that's just margin dash right of 20 pixels. And then we have margin dash bottom of how much are we doing for that? 20 pixels. And then we have margin dash left of 40 pixels. So you do that and you run it and our margins are all the same or change as well. Now we had showcased that we could use uh, various uh, various um, paddings, padding dash top, padding that's right. But if you just use padding and you want to apply it, it goes right. Let's let's read this. I, I forget. I always forget the order. But you can uh, you can assign it in one sort of attribute like this and put four values in there and it'll sign it accordingly. So it goes padding top, padding right, padding bottom, padding left. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see that we still get, we'll still get the same thing we have now by doing padding and instead of no top, we're gonna pass in 40 pixels for the top. Our next thing is we wanna do 20 pixels for the right. We wanna do 20 pixels for the bottom. So it goes top, right, bottom, left. And then we're gonna do another 40 pixels for the bottom. And so in here, it simplifies our code. Instead of having four attributes, we just have one and everything works accordingly. So using clockwise notation to specify the margin of an element, exactly the same concept. Where now we're gonna do margin, and instead of passing in four attributes, we're gonna do one with 40 px, then we have 20 px, then we have another 20 px, and then we have another 40 px for the left-hand side all around. It's a, I didn't know the name of it, but apparently it's called clockwise notation. So remember, I, now I will always remember clockwise notation because you start at the top, go the quarter right, go to the bottom, and then left. That makes complete sense. Good job for whoever decided that. I like that a lot. So um, you can also use what's called the M, uh, M as a unit of measurement. And I'm not going to bullshit you. This is kind of a silly thing in my, in my, um, my opinion. But the M is a relative unit. So it's relative to length values. It's kind of strange. But basically, it's it's a it's relative to the font sizes and things like that, where it's 1.5 m's. Uh, so it's like 1.5 times the the font size being used is kind of a, a way of looking at it. So the font the red box should have a padding property. Uh, so let's go ahead and add padding. And what do we want to uh, give it? We'll give it 20 pixels all around. Oops, padding 20 px. And uh, we want to give the L, oh, padding of 1.5M. So instead of applying 1.5M, or 20 pixels, we're gonna find 1.5M, which will inherit a certain amount and emphasize that, like so. Now, CSS style the HTML body element. So you can do, you can um, style the body element as well. So before we've, let's go ahead and run this so that we have a blank screen here. Uh, we've been targeting elements. You can do the same thing with body. You can go ahead and assign the background color of black. You'll see that I'm using the uh, dark version. If you want to turn that on, uh, you can do so in your settings, I believe somewhere. That's where I did it, somewhere in your settings. Uh, so let's go ahead and put black. Run this. Bam, so we get our nice sort of midnight black section like so. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, you can also inherit styles from the body element. So uh, a lot of you don't always have to define things to be very specific. For instance, if we throw a div or an h1 element, let's go ahead and follow the example and explain. So let's they want us to create an h1 element, and we're gonna put hello world. Pretty cool. And uh, for 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 those of you who don't know, this is from line one to the end of this document, that we're all considered that this is part of the body. So I know you don't see a body tag, but this is all part of the body. Um, so we have our closing tag, and we wanna give the body element the property color green. So this is gonna set the font color in our H1 element. And you're like, well, we're not targeting it with a class, an ID, or an, it, the element itself. But because this H1 element is nested, it's within the body, what happens is, is it inherits that property. Now, if we go and we write our own styling for H1 or a class or an ID that is more, more 
uh, that's nested deeper, for instance, so the class is nested in the body element, we're going to obviously use the class or the ID. Uh, but since nothing is nothing is there, it's going to inherit it from the, and we'll run this real quick so we can see it, you'll see that it inherits the value. Same thing with the font family that we're going to assign. So instead of actually going through each element and having to assign the font family and the color to green, we can just go ahead and do it in the in the body and all our all our code will inherit it like so. So this is what I was talking about a second ago about prioritizing one style over another. Now we want our, um, so right now we have green text. However, we're gonna go ahead and to, to create a class called pink dash text. And when we assign this class, uh, we're gonna, with that, the attribute's gonna be uh, pink. So let's go ahead and get this set up. So, oops, misspell. And we're gonna assign a class here it's going to override that class and use our pink text class because it's it's what's ever closest, right? If the H1 is nested with nothing in it, it's gonna inherit from the most nested item. In this case, the class is mo more nested and directly in here, so it's gonna inherit that. And now we have our pink text, which looks very good with the black, by the way. So whoever did pink and black, good job on that. Um, so we have pink text, your H1 element should have blue text. So override styles and sub subsequent CSS. So you can actually override based on which of these texts goes first. So uh, we're gonna have class one and class two. It doesn't matter which are listed in the H element. What matters, so what, what they're trying to say right now is that uh, when we type in our class, it doesn't matter what order they come in into your class. So we're going to, let's start by creating our blue text class. And we're going to assign a color of blue. And let's go ahead and assign this class, blue-text. And let's run it. And you'll see that the text is blue. However, let's just showcase that if we move this text, it's still blue. That has no effect. But if we actually go ahead and pass this above it, the text is going to be pink. The reason for that is because in your CSS, if you have contradictory statements like this where you're assigning two classes, it doesn't matter what's going on when you're assigning it in the element, the last value will be the value that your, your H1 in this case takes. So since blue, as you're working your way from the top of the document to the bottom of the document, that bottom document will override the value of your CSS. That's what's going on here. Um, declarations by styling ID attributes. So your H1 element should have the class pink text. Should also have the class blue text. Uh, we want to give it an ID of orange text. Oops. And we're going to give color orange. And then create CSS H1. And we're gonna pass in the ID here as well. So you can have IDs and you can have classes assigned. And you'll notice, let's go ahead and type this out and run it. You'll notice that this is orange. Let's actually move this around and run this. You notice it's still orange. The reason for that, even though it's not the last one, is because it's an ID and it's singular. It's making the assumption that the IDs are more important than the classes because there's only one of them. Thus, it will always take the ID for these alter for these overriding values. Okay, so we're talking a lot of the, and this is really good because this is like kind of the things that you pick up along the way of being a developer that maybe you're not taught in a traditional course, and they're really covering things that are kind of relevant that you really need to know. Now. Uh, we, are, we, have the, we have our pink text, we have our blue text, we have our ID, and now we're gonna go back to our inline styling. So the thing that trumps IDs and everything else is our inline styling. So now when we call color white, it will trump everything else because the idea is, look, we define this in a style sheet, but we're defining it, we're basically hard coding it here. So you should, you should appreciate the fact that that is going to always be the case. All right, so, um, 
So we talked about overriding with inline styling. We talked about overriding with uh, style tags, classes, how that works, IDs. There's also uh, this important tag that you can throw on here. What this basically does is it says, forget the normal overriding rules. Just listen to what I have to say. This is basically what it does. So in our pink text, the way that you use it, you just use exclamation point important. And now when we run it, it's gonna, the pink text, which should be the very first one over, over in basically, is going to now be the most important and thus the text is going to come out. Now use hex code for specific colors. Um, now uh, you can also, so we've been using these, these uh, words here. Uh, that are there's like 250 predefined words I believe something like that but you can also use hex codes which has tens of thousands different colors by using the hashtag and passing in the six values that go with it uh, so this will still set it to black so it's still black the background color but we just instead of using the word black we use the hex code um, now uh, give your h1 element the text I am red so right here we have red text uh, so we can go ahead and assign red here like so. So this will be red. Uh, use the hex code color for red. What is that? Uh, so red, instead of red, we're going to use the hex code, which is FF00, FF000. And then we're going to give the I am green. So the green color is... And you don't, to be honest, you don't really need to memorize most of these. You'll memorize some of the more common ones, like... Uh, white and uh black basically i don't really have any of them memorized <laughs> um but as you as you kind of move forward you'll most of the time look for colors that you like and go on from there there's so many that you're only going to memorize a few uh de web design and development isn't a a thing that you memorize it's a thing that you say hey i'd learned about hex colors and now i know how to use them then orange that's hashtag uh, FFA500. Now when we run this, you'll see that we have all our colors. Now also notice that you don't have to use caps in your FFs and your letters if you don't want to. Use abbreviated hex codes. So you can also use abbreviated hex codes where uh, we want to set the green color. The abbreviated version is 0F0. And then there's red F00. And then we have fuchsia. We have a fancy color here. Um, fuchsia. And then we finally have cyan. Almost as fancy as fuchsia. So you can use these shorter uh, text elements uh, as well. And you'll see there is our fuchsia, our cyan, our green, and our red. You can also use RGB, another way of putting out colors. The way that it stands for red, green, blue. So you pass that in like so. You have these parentheses. And you pass in the red value, the green value, and then the blue value like so. And now when we run this, our background color is this orange. What did I do wrong? 255, 165, 0. Your body element should have a black background. Oh, whoops. Uh... My fault for not paying attention. So make sure it's black and not orange. <laughs> uh, but the same principle applies. There's also, uh, we're going to do the same thing with red here. So as you might imagine, red, green, blue. So red would be RGB. Red would be zero or 255, 0, comma, 0. Let's go ahead and run that. So there's our red. We want uh, blue. You kind of apply the same principle. So if you don't, these, you don't really, not too hard to memorize. So instead of red, no red, no green, just blue. And then uh, whatever orchard text is, which is 
the value they give us here, RGB. And that's going to be 218, 112, 214, and one more over here, which is RGB. And this is finally going to be 160, 82, and 45. Let's go ahead and run it. So it's just another way that you can basically color these. And that is the end of our section. Up next, it looks like we're doing visual design and web development. It's going to go over more, th more, uh, many more topics, but that was our basic CSS course. It's about five hours. We did it in about 45 minutes or so, 40 minutes. But as always, guys, I hope you learned a lot. I did my best to explain this. If you want to support me, you can at patreon.com slash codingtutorials360. And if you want to join our Facebook group, Code Tech and Caffeine, a nice coding community, share resources, uh, support each other the best we can. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you all. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep on coding. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in coding boot camp, check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.